Hi, welcome to another episode of Real Exposures. I'm Jennifer Diamond from b h Photo, and today I'm here with photojournalist Jason Florio. Hi, Jason. Hey, Jennifer. How's it going? Good. How are you? Doing well, thanks. Thanks so much for coming in today. Oh, it's a pleasure. Appreciate you asking me. So Jason is from London, but he's based in New York City, and he's traveled all around the globe working on assignments for a variety of major magazines and publications. He's been to countries such as Afghanistan, Somalia, Libya, and Cuba. But most recently, he's been spending time in a region in West Africa called the Gambia, documenting the people of a small village there. The resulting body of work won him numerous awards, and today we're going to be talking about the images from that trip. So Jason, the first question I have for you is, how did you get into photography? It was an, an odd meeting with a, a friend in Dallas, Texas, who was a photo assistant, mm -hmm. and I'd expressed interest in photography, and he said, I think uh, you know, being an assistant's a good way to go. So I couldn't really afford to go to school, and he was kind enough to introduce me to uh, a fashion photographer he was working with. They brought me on as a second assistant. So I started down in, in Dallas for a couple of years, um, and then I thought if I really need to, what I really need to do is work with some of the big guys. So I came to New York, and I was very fortunate to get a first assisting position with um, Max Verducal, mm -hmm. who was working for The New Yorker and Vanity Fair and uh, assorted big publications. It was kind of a really across the board. One minute we'd be shooting Victoria's Secret stuff, and then we'd be in India photographing Mother Teresa. So it was a really, it's quite a broad education. So tell me, why did you choose a place like the Gambia, this place in West Africa, <laughs> to photograph? It's, um, it was a friend of mine that I grew up with. He had uh, decided to move out to the Gambia and set up a reforestation program and set up a small lodge. Mm -hmm. And he called me and said, look, we've got this project. Why don't you come out and make some pictures, get out of New York for a little bit. Um, so I, a few months later, I got on a plane and arrived in Makasutu, which is this mm -hmm. forest that they were living in. And that, that was it. I got hooked. Were you so, in total culture shock when you got there? It was, yeah. It was, I, I didn't realize how basically they were living. Right. I, lucky enough, I brought a hammock with me with a makeshift mosquito net. They were living in a tiny tent mm -hmm. and we were just getting food from the fishermen that went by, and it was really grassroots, living off the land existence. It was wonderful. So how did you fund this project? Did you get a grant for it? Um, I, for the early stages, I just literally took it out of my own pocket. Um, wow. And there was a, you know, sometimes I'd get an assignment or I'd be able to sell some of the images, so that helped fund it. But for the first 12 years, um, yeah, most of it just came out of my own mm -hmm. pocket. I've had a little bit of sponsorship. There was an airline that flies down there and they've been kind enough over the years to give me free flights and my accommodation with these guys is free. So it's, you know, a little bit of money mm -hmm. here and there to make it happen. So while you were down there, you really focused on the people of the Gambia and mm -hmm. you took some really incredible portraits. Thank you. And I wanted to know, was there a specific inspiration behind these portraits? One of the things that inspired me to really get into photography was the work of, of Abaddon, especially his work in the American West. So I was always very drawn to you know, very sort of direct portraiture. Mm -hmm. um, and also, about 12 years ago, I came across the work of Mike Disfarmer, who's a, an old American photographer. Very straightforward images of, of farmers in Arkansas on a black background most okay. of the time. And I thought, okay, that's, that's what I want to do. I need to do something straightforward. I don't want to do anything tricky. It mm -hmm. needs to be quite a you know, kind of direct, basic approach to it. While you were down there, you captured two main bodies of work. Mm -hmm. One was in black and white and one was in color. Uh -huh. What was your original reasoning for photographing in black and white? Um, the black and white was, uh, when I was working with, with Max Viduka, we, we were shooting a lot. A lot of the um, stories we were doing were in black and white, so it was kind of a lot of leftover film. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so one thing was I had access to free Tri-X film, which was great. Right. But also, I just I wanted to create something that was a little bit timeless. And I, and I felt, you know, 12 years ago, I felt the, the color might have looked a little commercial in some uh -huh. way. Um, and I was just, yeah, just to me, it felt right at that time to, to use black and white. And, um, and then for the color work, really was just a little bit kind of by accident, um, because we wanted to make a, a long journey around the country. And each day, we'd photograph a different chief. And I was going to photograph him in black and white with film, and the digital camera was purely to make an instant picture for him. We brought a small uh, Canon i80 printer with us, which we ran off a car battery. Um, so the idea was that we would 
give a print to the chief kind of in a, as a present for staying. Um, but really the digital camera was just, just purely for that and then shooting sort of reportage along mm -hmm. the way. But we realized after the second one that the color ones look really nice and it would separate the two bodies yeah. of work. So that's why I stayed with the color for the second body. Did you find it liberating to be using digital after using film that whole time? Yeah, it was kind of nice just to, it was it also, you know, the idea that we could get back to the tent at the end of the evening and see what we've got. And that helped kind of build right. on the body. As we went along, we kind of got a, you know, the theme was, we were able to sort of see the theme rather than having to wait to come back and see what we had got. Based on your experience, you know, shooting in film and then mm -hmm. moving to digital, has that sort of influenced the way you think you'll shoot in the future when you work on a project like this? Like, do you think you'll be more inclined to shoot in digital next time? I think, yeah, definitely. We're, we're planning another expedition, um, and you know, I might bring the the Pentax six seven mm -hmm. along with the Tri-X just as a just to have it as a not as a backup, but as a, as right. a sort of an extra tool. But really, yeah, working in digital is absolutely the way to go. And which camera did you use for your digital photography? Um, for this project, I used a Canon 5D, and now I've moved up to the 5D Mark II. And any specific lenses? Um, I've been mainly using a 24 to 70 mm -hmm. to 2.8, which is, is great for doing these portraits. Right. It's, it's really perfect. And then for a lot of the reportage work I, I do, and um, especially for as we were moving on, on the road on the journey, I had a um, uh, 17 to 24, which was great just for, you know, the sort of panoramics right. and capturing the scenes along the way. So there was something that was really distinct about your color images besides mm -hmm. the actual portraits. Mm -hmm. You use this very effective way of making the people sort of pop out of the image and that was this mm -hmm. sort of see-through black cloth. Right. And I wanted to know a little bit more about that. Where did you find that cloth okay. and why did you decide to use it? <laughs> Um, the cloth came about because when I first made the first journey I did to the Gambia, I didn't really know what the environment was going to look like. And also, I'd been seeing this work by Dis Farmer, and his work had been on a black background. Mm -hmm. So I thought, well, yeah, maybe that'll be my way to, to go there. Um, and just before going, I was back in the UK, and I asked my grandmother, I'm sure she's got some black cloth laying around somewhere, as grandmothers do. <laughs> do that, no. um, and she, she came up with this black bed sheet, and at first I was you know, a little concerned because mm -hmm. it wasn't sort of completely solid black. It has a little bit, it was a little bit translucent. So that ended up working really well because part of the environment could come through. Right. So the image, the people weren't just on a, you know, mm -hmm. floating on a black background. You really started to get a sense of the environment behind them. Um, and I think that's the success of those pictures is really due to that. I think if I just had them right. on a black background, that, that'd be nice, but I think the background is really, it adds a whole other element to the image. Yeah, because typically when you just have a portrait against a solid background, it's fairly two-dimensional, but mm -hmm. by adding the background through the see-through material, it just became very three-dimensional and really dynamic, so right. well you. done. Thanks, <laughs> yeah, that was a, one of those sort of uh, you know, lucky accidents. Really, right. so. <laughs> Let's talk about all the press that you received when you came back to America. Mm -hmm. I think perhaps one of the biggest accomplishments of this whole project was that your image was featured on the cover of PDN, mm -hmm. Photo District News. Yeah. So tell me about that. How did that happen? That must have been so exciting for you. Yeah, that was, I mean, to get a cover is always kind yeah. of thrilling, and especially when it's something like PDN where you know mm -hmm. there's going to be a lot of industry people um, seeing it. Right. Um, and I. I had a conversation with Amber Terranova, who's the, the photo editor up there, and she was really excited to hear about our, our expedition. And, uh, and she called me and said, we're going to use one for the cover. And I'm like, that's great. It's really thrilling. And I, I can't wait to take that cover to the chief who appears oh, on the cover. Yeah. I'm, I'm hoping I can get back to Gambia some point oh, soon and, uh, and present it to him. He was yeah. a fantastic guy, and he'll be thrilled to know he's on the cover of a magazine. Exactly. So, yeah. Out of all the accomplishments you've had in your mm. career, would you say that this is one of the biggest ones, if not the biggest accomplishment you've had? Um, it, we've definitely got the most attention mm -hmm. from it. I think um, people got excited about it, not just solely about the images, which you know, obviously those are the most important thing, but it was about the journey as well and the whole sort of process of, of creating the pictures. So mm -hmm. I think that you know, definitely added to the success of of the of the piece and yeah I've been I feel really lucky we've you know won a number of awards for it over over the mm -hmm. last year so 
yeah, I was kind of shocked. We thought we were just going to take yeah. off, spend a couple of months walking around the Gambia <laughs> and had no idea that we'd get so much sort of follow-on success from it. So it's been, been really, really exciting. So you didn't go to Gambia by yourself. You actually collaborate with your wife, mm -hmm. Helen, who's the producer of your expeditions. Yeah. And the two of you are kind of a team, which I think is really special. Um, so talk about how that kind of happened. Yeah, no, I was really fortunate. I met Helen in the Gambia mm -hmm. about 12 years ago. She had, we had mutual friends there, um, and we didn't actually get together until about three years ago. Um, and before we got married, she came up with the idea of walking around the Gambia. <laughs> Wow. So we figured if we can do that together, then we can get, we'll, we'll get married after that and see if it all works out. <laughs> well, Jason, thank you so much for coming today and being on this episode of Real Exposure. Pleasure. It's been no, a thank real you very pleasure. much. Thank you for having me. And just to conclude, I wanted to let everybody know that Jason has a book on blurb.com about his recent project in the Gambia, and him and his wife Helen have launched a behind-the-scenes blog that documents their expeditions around the world. You can find all this information on Jason's website. So thanks again, Jason, Thank you, and I will see everybody at the next Real Exposures. Yeah.